Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another pre-market watch list. If you will, please give me a thumbs up or a yes. Could turn that volume down. Please give me a thumbs up or a, a yes if you guys can actually uh, recognize a difference in sound quality. So I am using a new microphone. So please let me know if you can hear a difference in sound quality. For the past couple days, I was accidentally using a different microphone from my video camera that I didn't mean to actually use. I thought I was using my new microphone, which is this guy right here. I thought I was using my Yeti, uh, but apparently the settings on my streams were going through my Logitech camera, and I didn't know that. So that's why everything was sounding really weird, and people were like, hey, your sound's really off. It sounds horrible. I'm like... That doesn't make sense. I just bought a new microphone. Why isn't it working? So really, it was just me not knowing what the hell I was doing. So I apologize. So sound should be much better now. Now you can hear my beautiful voice, especially when I sound like Arnold, okay? So let's hurry up and get into looking at some stocks. All right? So here we go. Um, today's watch list isn't necessarily the most amazing watch list. I will give you a heads up. So we're not going to have a lot to go through, so I will leave it up to you guys to send through and maybe look at some other stocks, all right? Um, so for later in the video, when we start looking at these stocks, please make sure uh, that the stocks you guys are recommending me to take a quick analysis on do have volume and maybe a good news catalyst this morning. Of course, I'll still take a look at them, even if they don't, but let's try and make sure we have some quality stocks coming through today. I'm only going to talk about um, a couple, which is Twitter, um, a higher price stock called Lam Research, um, Netflix, ECYT, and then there's another penny stock that I honestly can't remember um, off the top of my head that I, I honestly just forgot it. Hold on. Um, what was it? Hold on one second. RIGL. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start sharing the screen, and we're going to get into it. So um, here we are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first couple stocks we're going to take a look at here this morning. Let me start sharing my screen to you guys. There we go. Right, that's my, yep, okay, cool. So the <laughs> R-I-G-L, yes, 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 yes. Sounds good, happy hump day, yes, yes, yes. All right, so again, once again, thank you guys all for tuning in. Let's get started. So first stock here on my watch, it doesn't really matter to be honest. So the first one I'll talk about is R-I-G-L because I know a lot of people like the lower price penny stock. So we were watching R-I-G-L. Um, ideally, the game plan here was uh, they had some good news yesterday, right at about market close, maybe even the after hours time. Something about FDA approval for Tavalasi, Tavalisi, whatever that is. I don't know. Probably some new drug uh, that that probably does something phenomenal. Who knows? But anyways, it looks like they got FDA approval. Uh, stock pops up after hours, has a pretty good trading session during after hours trading. We pop up to a high here of. 491 before crashing, but um, that doesn't mean that RIGL is out for the count because I've seen a lot of times these stocks that go up after hours and then all the after hours traders and you know they start taking profit here, which causes it to go down. But a lot of times what's going to happen is if they go down too much pre-market, right? If they start dumping pre-market, but not a lot, that means they a lot of times will continue down. But in this scenario, we've already dumped so much pre-market that we're getting very close to the point where we might start kind of bottoming and curling and going sideways, which then will cause for maybe a pop out of the gate like that, okay? So if this keeps going down, 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 it, it eventually is gonna get to a part where it's at the bottom and it might actually be due for a little bit of a pop out of the gates. Now, I wouldn't suggest maybe holding it very long it would have to be a quick in and out trade with RGL. If it does in fact come down, it kind of curls, bottoms out, and then pop, right? Uh, that's possible because it's very unlikely that RIGL is going to come all the way down to where it started yesterday. It's very unlikely that it goes all the way to there, but it's more likely that it would do something like go all the way down and then kind of bottom like this and then because you know for a fact that there are people that are short right now on the stock that have been getting in here, or maybe there, right, and there. So there's definitely people shorting it. So they might end up getting squeezed out at some point, right? So that's kind of where my thought process is on RIGL. They have good news. 
Had a nice run after hours. It's starting to trend down right now. Let's wait to see if it bases out, and then maybe we could look for a long entry there. All right. Who knows where the, who knows where the entry is going to be? It could be all the way down at four dollars. But but again, right? That that's what we're looking for is some type of bottom curling basing action to take place there. Um. Yep. Amanda. Uh. uh Amada or Amada. That's a good good thing there. Stop calling. Okay. So. So let's see. Okay, cool. Got a paper trade here. For... Yeah, yeah. Paper trade. If you don't feel comfortable, that's a great idea. Um, I will cover TVIX. Uh, let me mark that down right now, guys. Oh. TVIX. Okay, cool. Um, so on to the next one here. And now I'm going to go to uh, Twitter. All right. So Twitter had a phenomenal day yesterday from 29 to a high of 30. Two, um, or you know, yeah. So it, it had a really good day for Twitter. Uh, if you look at the daily chart, um, you'll see that you know we went through a dip, but you know this was also the time period that the market was coming down really hard. So yes, um, we had a bad little run there, but it was also due to the fact that the market was coming down pretty good. Now, if you look at this chart, you'll also see that right now Twitter has started basing. Honestly, the entry long was more or less yesterday or, you know, on one of these higher lows, but it's possible that we'll see Twitter have a continuation day. It is, but you also have to think that this is resistance on Twitter right at this $32 mark. We stopped there and that's where we dumped. So we should see a little bit of resistance here, which is what we're seeing, right? If you look at this one minute chart, you'll see that it's starting to kind of roll over, right? You can see the price action starting to do a little bit of a rolling over ordeal. Um, does that mean it's gonna just dump? No, it doesn't, right? It could actually bounce and then go this way. So what it's telling us right now is that we are looking a little weak. Buying pressure has slowed down. We had a really good day yesterday. Um, it's possible we'll see a continuation play. All right, it is possible to see a continuation play on Twitter but the only way we're getting a continuation is if we break above the pre-market high or that yellow line. That would be the entry for me long is a break over that line right there. That's where I'd want to get in. That would be my go-to entry right there. A break over that line for a possible continuation. Now, what is also likely to happen if we don't immediately just go, what is very likely to happen is we'll see Twitter roll over, we'll dump, we'll dump, right? And then there will be, you know, maybe a little more dump, but then a dip buy, right? Do you guys remember Netflix? Was it Netflix yesterday? Was that the one we were talking about or was it something else? I think it was Netflix. Remember I was talking about Netflix and I said, I think it was yesterday. Now, yeah. Remember I was talking about Netflix and I said, watch Netflix because it'll probably perform into a dip buy where we went up and then we went down, dip, 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 and then we went long, right? And that's because you had such a good move overnight that people take profits. And that's the same kind of thing we see here with, um, sorry, Twitter, TWTR, um, is it had such a good day yesterday that a lot of investors might sell, 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 and it comes down to a point where new investors, right, this would be the new, buy that looks horrible but new buyers want to come in and buy that up so maybe look for a dip buy on twitter today and then uh let's see let's see what else. let's see one second one second one second just going through uh just going through here first time here caribbean all right well mrs smith uh missy smith thank you for tuning into the channel uh we will look at some of these stocks as soon as I get done going through, JR, what's going on, brother? Um, Twitter, uh, right now, I think is more of a neutral. I think we're going to see a sell off and then a dip buy. Um, let's see. I may be short. Yeah, so so that's, a, that's another way you could look at playing Twitter. You could look at playing Twitter short in the morning, right? You could look at playing it short here in the morning in anticipation it's going to drop. But then be careful because there's probably going to be some dip buyers that want to come in and grab it up. All right. So on to the next one here is LCRX. Now, this is a higher price stock. So for some of you, yeah, it might be out of your range or LRCX. Sorry. This might be out of your range. Um, they actually reported. Uh, so they had earnings. 
But they actually reported, um, I would say, a positive. Uh, they definitely reported positive earnings, um, definitely some positive uh, earnings, I would say. So again, they just did earnings. I would say it's pretty positive, and for whatever reason, it's selling off. So though I'm really good at trading and I usually know what I'm talking about, I still can't wrap my head around why this is sold off so far this morning and it did pretty well on earnings. I don't know it. I don't know why. There could be something that was said in the conference call that scared investors that maybe that wasn't put out on the news. It's possible that there's some news out there on the internet that is not on TOS. Who knows what it may be, but they are selling off. And if you go through the news, um, it's pretty clear that LAM Research has a positive wrap. There's a lot of analysts that do project um, uh, that the price target is going to reach 285, 270, 295, somewhere in the 300. So right now, LAM Research is, um, you know, uh, view, viewed as a buy still. So I'm a little long bias on this, though it dropped down a lot. It's definitely starting to trend up. So I think within the coming days for maybe a swing trade or maybe even possibly option calls, some traders should watch LCRX because 90% of the time stocks will fill their gap down. So this is going to have up until about $212 before this thing fills the gap. So I think there's a room for profit long on LRCX. Okay. Um, now I will touch on one last stock and then I will run through some common ones everyone wants to know about. So last one is ECYT. ECYT, again, doesn't trade on the heaviest amount of volume right now. I'm not suggesting watching this as a day trade, but more of a swing trade. Uh, because if, you know, it was a penny stock, back here it was a penny stock. And then it pumped up here, right? And it never fully crashed. So let me use different arrows, right? Let me use this. So right here it pumped up, but it did not fully crash. Right here it got pumped up again but then it did not fully crash again, right? Most penny stocks, most penny stocks, when they get pumped up, they'll come right back down. This has failed to do that. So for whatever reason, I'm feeling there's some value investing taking place. That's why I'm more long bias on ECYT. We just went through a dip. We're seeing a couple strong days here. I think we have room to run to the upside. So if you wanna watch this or put this on your watch list for the coming days, possible swing trades long, option calls long, you know, whatever you feel comfortable doing, I think that's a good uh, uh, a good play to watch to the long side. As we are in a little bit of a bullish pattern, we have yet to break over this you know downward trend line. So we'll see in the coming days. This will be determining if we break above, we'll go long. If it you know breaks below, uh, that might be a short entry there as well. All right. So those are the stocks that I'm watching. All right. So. Let's see, I will touch on TVIX real fast. TVIX is coming down to a very, very low price. We're all the way down to seven, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, we're down very, very low um, on TVIX, right? You can see we've been trending down, 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 down. TVIX right now is at a very strong support of about $6, okay? Okay. Though it's at support, the support level means absolutely uh, nothing. The support level means nothing because TVIX is an inverse related ETF and its movement is solely based on the fear of a stock market crashing or fear that the market is heading towards a bear market. So unless we are actually seeing the stock market, let me write this out big, Unless we see the stock market, and I'll just do M for market, or M-R-K-T. Unless we're seeing the stock market go down like this, and unless the stock market's going down and the volatility is high, this will not go up. It'll just keep going down, right? So the only way TVX is going to rebound is if, and I'll show you, the only way that's going to rebound is if the market... We are all the way up to 270. Nice trend. The only way this is going to TVIX will go up is if the market starts coming back down. So until the market reaches resistance and the bearish traders or the bears take over and take control of this move, we are not going to see TVIX do anything. Okay. It'll basically stay stagnant or keep declining. 
Now we'll focus on the stock I, 852, one hour. Yeah, yeah, I still do momentum trading, yes, yep. Um, it's just there's no momentum trading to do when there's no penny stocks to trade. And to be honest, there really hasn't been that many great plays lately for momentum trades. I mean, there's been a few. Don't get me wrong. There's been a few, but nothing pre-market lately has been phenomenal. Okay. Um, now, I, I has been trending up for a couple days now. As you can see, it's been going up and up and up. I do believe that we're getting close to the top on I because you can see we've had a good steady uptrend on I. But now we're getting jerks, right? So, and when you take a step back and you look at it from a time frame like this, it almost, you know, you got to look for that mountain. You're looking for the mountaintop, right? So let's do a time frame of like 10 days, five minute, right? So if you look at it like this, it looks like this is a mountain. We're going up the hill, you know, some bumps in the way, but we're going up. And then all of a sudden we, we're starting to reach the top. We're getting to the summit and things are starting to get a little bit more aggressive, right? That's what I see on I for right now, okay? So I do believe we're getting close to the top on I, for right now at least. Um, let's see. So if so, now would be a good time for you guys to mention out a few stocks you would like me to take a look at. Um, I'll go through DPW. Uh, DPW is kind of just, yeah, I don't really, I wouldn't really necessarily be trading DPW. I went over this, I think the other day, the other day I traded it. And once it got to 1.5, there was like 8 million shares trying to be sold. So one, so that level right there on DPW is strong resistance. Um, so I'm not really concerned with trading DPW though. It might be trading on some pretty good volume. It, it's really not doing much. So you're better off just staying away. And again, guys, you don't always have to be trading. Uh, some days you can just not be trading. Um, FUSZ. Um, FUSZ does not trade a whole lot of volume. So this is necessarily not going to be the best stock to day trade yet. Um, it could be something more or less good for swing trading. But again, this is traded on the OTC market. I don't trade OTC market stocks. Uh, they can be easily manipulated and or the governing body is not really there to govern those particular companies or stocks. So I do not mess around with OTCs. Um, let's see, what else do we have? CLDX, I'll take a look here, CLDX. Ho, 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 sorry, buddy. Uh, hmm. Wow, okay. Um, well, it definitely trades light volume, so it's still not a good stock to necessarily day trade. Um, you'd want to be playing this more as a swing trade. Um, but 417, what was the news? Benzene and downgrades, April, blah, blah, blah. Neutral overweight by Kepra Fizzer. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, they've obviously been downgraded a bit, it looks like. And uh, I have no reason why their price target. I don't know why they're even dropping. Analytic. Uh, what? That was on the 16th of that drop, right? So the 16th. Okay, that's why. I was looking at the 17th, maybe. Okay, let's see. Stock extends slide, plunges 50% pre-market after failed drug study. So basically, this looks like it's a therapeutics company, right? So whatever drug CLDX was working on, it failed. And that's why it went all the way down there. So imagine, right? Imagine this for a second. The way you have to think about this is, you know, imagine Connor or imagine any one of you guys here in the chat room here on uh, YouTube, right? Imagine your whole college career was dependent upon you um, getting an A plus on one paper, right? Your whole college career, you're working towards getting an A plus on this 200 page, 500 page paper that went over, I don't know, the ins and outs of architectural design or engineering or whatever, right? And come to find when your papers do, you absolutely just shit the bed and you just, you just crash and burn. Your paper is trash. Professor's like, no go, sorry, bud. What are you going to do? You've been working on this for four or five years and it's absolute garbage. What do you think is going to happen to your self-esteem? 
right? Your confidence is going to go extremely low. So you can think about that the same way as therapeutic companies and biotech stocks. They work very hard and very long clinical trials, studies, tests, research, scientific method, all those cool things we learned when we were in high school. They do all that very vigorously on new drugs and these studies. And if it doesn't work and it fails, that's like having to start from scratch. So investors become very scared and it gets dumped out. That's what happens to a lot of those biotechs. So that's why you got to be careful holding biotechs, um, especially if you don't know the company, you don't know what they're doing, uh, because if their drugs or their patents and, and stuff like that fail, not necessarily patents, sorry, but if their drug, their treatments, their trials, phase three, phase two, phase one, if any of those fail, it's pretty detrimental to the stock. You always most likely see them going down. All right. Um, it, okay. Okay. Uh, there you go. Like John said, nothing else in the pipeline. So that was a perfect example. Your whole college career, you work on this amazing paper. That's the only thing you had going for you. And then it fails. Same thing here. CLDX. They had this drug that they're working on super hard. That's the only thing going for them and it fails. That's not so good. Um, <laughs> so let's see where we're at. 858. All right, cool. We'll, we'll call it there on the streaming. All right, guys, so that's all we got here for you today. So I hope that helps some of you guys determine on what it is maybe you want to trade. I wouldn't necessarily be long bias on CLDX, but definitely keep um, CF or, uh, ECYT on your watch. Keep LRCX on your watch. Keep Twitter on your watch. Keep I don't know if I covered Netflix today. I didn't. Watch Netflix. Continue to watch Netflix long. Um, if you're not familiar, they added... 2 million new subscribers, I believe, the last quarter. So that's really big, right? 2 million subscribers at, you know, I don't know. I think they do $10 a pop per month subscription. That's a lot of money, okay? Imagine, I don't know, what is that? 2 million. So you got 2 million and you're bringing in, you know, oh, it's just ridiculous. I'm not even going to do the math. You guys can do it. But regardless, Netflix brought in 2 million new subscribers just last quarter. Their earnings crushed it. Something like that could be a nice long-term position, nice long-term hold there. Um, so keep your eyes on that Netflix. Um, ECYT, if it were to come crashing down like most penny stocks do, we probably would have seen it happen already. So I have reason to believe that there is value investing taking place in that stock, which means good hold long-term possibly. Um TVIX, don't expect TVIX to come up anytime soon until the market starts showing signs of bearer signals. And, and most importantly about TVIX or any inverse related ETFs that trend up when the market trends down, the most important thing, listen very carefully, the most important thing about any inverse related ETF, TVIX, UVXY, QQQ, um, VXX, any one of those that performs either in the direction of the market or opposite the market, or something like, let me repeat that, any of them that trend opposite the market or they go up when the market goes down, the most important thing to understand is those particular ETFs will only see significant moves or start trending back up at a fast rate when the volatility index is high. So into, in order to correctly trade those tickers, you must understand the volatility index. If you're not familiar and you're tuning in, I do have a video on this in my YouTube channel. Search up how to make money when the stock market crashes. I think that's what I made that video as. Or just go through all of my videos because you'll learn a ton, all right? So that's all I have for you guys today. Always remember, if you would like to join into our free chat room that's completely free, you can do so by following the description or link in the description. If you wanted to join into our trading course in live trading group where we trade live every day and we have live classes and mentoring and things like that, that will be your first link. And then, of course, there's a bunch of other stuff in there like our Facebook group and trade idea scanners and things like that. So always make sure to check that out if you're new um, and stay tuned because I will see you guys um, tomorrow morning. And then I will have more videos coming out for you guys. So um, let's see. Do we have any other questions before I head out? 
<laughs> um, you know what, Brian? Yes, I will do that. Let me mark down your question. Actually, Brian, you are going to be, I like that question. You are going to be the question of the week. This is something new that I will be doing for um, all of the subscribers on my channel. You can leave a question. Um, leave it. It doesn't matter what video, right? I see the comments. I don't have the time to answer all the comments. There's hundreds of them. So if I don't reply to your comment on YouTube, don't you know get you know hurt about it. It's just there's so many of them. So the best thing you can do about comments on any of my videos is put a question. Right? It may or may not get answered. There might be someone else there to answer it for you. Uh, but what I do is I'm going to start going through and looking at the questions. And each week, I'm going to take somebody's question, give you guys a shout out, and I'll be doing those videos most likely on Thursday. So we're going to do one weekly question answered. And this one's weekly question will be um, the screen setup. So my screen setup. And I'll walk you through not only mine, but a few different options and how you can guys can kind of play with it on Thinkorswim to get a comfortable, customized look and feel so that if you want to change your stuff around, you can do that, okay? Um, please also give me a like on the video. That helps me get into the Suggested Videos channel. As I said, I'll always be honest with you guys. By giving me a like, it makes me get out there more. So do appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow morning. So most importantly, stay green.